Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about the celestial sphere. What does that mean? Well, before we talk about celestial sphere, let's talk about the Earth sphere. Here's the Earth, well, my best interpretation of the Earth, and the lines here represent a grid system that we put on the Earth so we can find any location on the Earth. It's the latitude and the longitude. Latitude, of course, is the height above and below the equator. Longitude is a point on the Earth going around the Earth like this. Uh, relative to the Greenwich line which goes right through England, the small town Greenwich near London. And so we were able to find a grid system uh, or I, say, I should say we're able to find a point on the Earth using that grid system. Now most people know it as the GPS. GPS is a satellite system that automatically calculates through communication with cell phones and other communication devices, calculates the position of any point on the Earth relative to a grid system. So in astronomy, we've wanted to do the same thing, but with the entire universe. Now there's one problem. The location from which we observe the universe, the Earth, is always constantly moving. It is rotating, it's going around the sun, it wobbles, it does all kinds of things. The wobble and the change of the actual tilt and so forth is so slow that we can pretty well ignore it in the typical span of a decade or a lifetime. So the two most important motions that we have to deal with on the Earth is the fact that the Earth is rotating and the fact that the Earth goes around the sun, revolves around the sun. That makes a coordinate system of the universe kind of difficult to, to figure out. So what we wanted to do is we want to find some sort of fixed way of determining points in the universe, things in the universe, be able to put a coordinate system on it just like we did on the Earth. And our first problem is that the orientation of the equator of the Earth is not along the ecliptic. Remember the Earth goes around the Sun and we call that plane that the Earth carves out so to speak as it goes around the Sun, we call that the ecliptic plane. Now the equator makes an angle of about 23 and a half degrees relative to that ecliptic plane. But since we're observing from the Earth, and since we already have an equator to the Earth and we have poles at the Earth, it made a lot of sense to set up the celestial sphere, the coordinate system of the, of the universe, along with the coordinate system of the Earth, same orientation. So we wanted the north and the south pole of the universe, so to speak, to be along the same lines of the north and south pole of the Earth, and we wanted the equatorial plane of the universe to be in line with the equatorial plane of the Earth. So if we take, if we imagine that we slice through the Earth at the equator, and then we take that slice and we move it out in all directions, forward, backward, sideways, then we get this enormously large, infinitely large plane that now becomes the celestial equator or the celestial equator plane. Everything to the north of it is north of the equator, everything to the south of it is south of the equator. So it basically divides the universe into two regions. The second thing we wanted to do is be able to point to the point directly above and directly below, below the Earth. So we have the North Pole of the Earth, and if we go straight up from there, we reach a point we call the North Celestial Pole. Well, it's not really a pole, it's kind of like a point. It's kind of like a line along the North-South Pole axis, about which the Earth rotates. And if we extend that infinitely in one direction, infinitely in the other direction, when we point in that direction, we're pointing in the, to the North Celestial Pole, and we're pointing to the South Celestial Pole. All right, so now we have a coordinate system that is in line with the orientation of the Earth, which now defines the coordinate system of the entire universe. We still have to figure out how to find things in the universe, like let's say if there's a star over here or there's a, or there's a constellation over there, where is that located? Because remember, as the Earth continues to spin and revolves around the Sun, it makes it difficult to say, hey, that's where it is, because as the Earth rotates, of course, it ends up moving, and from day to day and month to month, things are in different locations in the sky relative to the time of day or the time of night. We'll get to that in some later videos. First of all, what we want to do is get the concept of, of observing things throughout the celestial uh, sphere. So if you just for a moment ignore the fact that the Earth is rotating or revolve around the Sun, and I put a, let's say, an observer on the Earth. Let's say I put an observer right here. There's my observer. Notice if that observer looks straight up. Let's say you're the observer and you look straight up, what point are you looking at? Well, that point you're looking at may be, of course, depending upon uh, what position of the Earth it is with its uh, rotation around the Sun uh, or re revolution around the Sun and at uh, what point it is in its uh, rotation around its axis. When you look straight up, you're looking at some point in space that may be different from the next moment, the next moment as you're looking straight up, but that point is given a special name, it's called the zenith. 
So when we look at a point directly above our head, wherever you may happen to be, whatever time of day or night it might be, if you look straight up, that point is a zenith. And of course, that point will be a different point in the celestial sphere from second to second to second as the Earth is rotating and the Earth is revolving. But when you're standing at a fixed location on the Earth and you look in a certain directions, the point you're looking at will always be the same point according to the celestial sphere when we use the right coordinate system, and we'll get to that later. But first of all, let's say that we're standing right here, and let's say we're standing at a point that is 60 degrees above the equator, 60 degrees north of the equator. Well, if I want to look at the celestial north pole, where should I be looking? Well, if I look straight up, I look at a line that goes from the center of the Earth straight out at a 60 degree angle north of the equator. So we'd be looking at something in this location. Let's say I want to look at a star right there. But what if I want to look at the North Star, Polaris, that's sitting right just about at the celestial North Pole? Which way should I be looking? Well, notice there is a 30 degree angle between where I'm looking if I look straight up and where the celestial North Pole is from that location on the Earth. So that means I have to turn my gaze at an angle of 30 degrees from straight looking straight up. So if I'm standing at this location on the Earth, 60 degrees north of the equator, and I want to look at the North Pole, I face north, and then I have to look at an angle of about 30 degrees to find the North Star. So that's what you would need to do there. Now, what if I want to look at a star that is somewhere near the uh, equatorial plane or the celestial equator? Well, that way I know that that's now a 60 degree angle in this direction in the direction south from where I'm looking if I'm looking straight up. So that means I need to look face southward, straight up as a zenith, and then I have to look at an angle of 60 degrees to find that particular star. If I want to find a star, for example, that is directly at 45 degrees north of the equator, like right about here somewhere at an angle of 45 degrees, well, since I'm at a point that's 60 degrees north of the equator and I'm looking for a star that's 45 degrees north of the equator, I have to look in a southerly direction, an angle of 15 degrees. So in instead of looking straight up, I find an angle of 15 degrees towards the south, and that's where, the, that's where that star, that's where that constellation ought to be. So relative to the what we call the celestial sphere, depending upon where on the Earth I am, I need to look in certain directions to find certain things relative to the celestial sphere. If I'm standing on the North Pole, Bring a warm sweater if you want to do that. And uh, hopefully you to find some ice to stand on. And if you look straight up to the zenith, you should find the North Star. But someone who lives at the equator, and that person needs to see the North Star, which way should they be looking? Well, that's at an angle of 90 degrees from looking straight up, which means you have to look right along the horizon and just by the horizon. Well, actually, it depends where it is. You may want to walk a few miles this way so that you're just slightly above the equator and then you can look along the horizon and that's where you should see the North Star. So depending upon where you're on the earth you can see certain things and you can't. What about the person living in, the, in South America somewhere in Argentina? Maybe they live somewhere in this, in, uh, in this area right there. So let's say the person is uh, right there and wants to see the North Pole. Well that's not going to be possible because in order to see the North Pole you'd have to look in this direction that would be into the earth and of course you can't see the North Pole. They can see everything in the southern hemisphere, they can see everything in the southern portion of the celestial sphere. So location from where you're observing is very important, realizing where you are relative to the equator, relative to the North Pole or relative to the South Pole, and then knowing in which direction to look to find certain things in the sky according to that celestial sphere. That's why we need the celestial sphere. It needs to be fixed upon the Earth, it needs to be coordinated with the coordinate system of the Earth, North Pole, South Pole, the equator, because that's really the only thing we have that we can relate to that makes sense to us. And so the celestial sphere is fixed upon that. Now you'll learn how we deal with the fact that the Earth is rotating and revolving in different directions around the, no, I shouldn't say in different directions, but revolving around the Sun. So we'll, de we'll deal with that in a later video.